Okay, here we go. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah. So we are thrilled to have you here today. This is recorded. Amy's going to let people in as they, they hop in. And we want this to be engaging, collaborative, sharing. So if you haven't already done so, please share where you're from. We'd love to know that. And while you're doing that, we will keep moving. So what's this about? Leadership and influence. That's what we're talking about today, but we're going to talk about it in a different way. We're going to talk about sharing power. You know, what does it mean to be a leader and what does power look like? What does it mean to lead with style? How to build rock stars, how to be a rock star yourself, how to, how to build rock stars within your team. So we're going to ex explain how you can define your style based on character strengths. We are going to play a superpowers game. I'm going to play that with Amy since I don't know what all of your superpowers are, but we're going to encourage you to actually find out what they are. And then we would love to play that game with you later, one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, or in an individual little session. Then we're going to understand the different types of power and how to use those styles to get things done. We'll, we'll explore sharing the power and putting other, other people first and help other people succeed. And then how to become a maven with our worksheet. You know, what does maven mean? So with that, why don't we just jump in? Why are you here? What attracted you to this title? Please share in the chat what, what got you interested. Tell us, tell us why you're here what you want to learn, what you think this is about. Go ahead and share. Why are you here? Understanding different leadership types. Nice, Nikki. Welcome, Nikki. Good to see you here. Excellent. <laughs> a partner knows me and wants to see what this is all about. Kelly wants to be like Michelle when she grows up. That's awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. Be careful what you wish for, Kelly. <laughs> Everyone wants to be a better recruiter. That's awesome. Oh, that's nice. That's really cool. I like that. And using leadership and influence in the ability to recruit others. Excellent. Anybody else want to share? Don't be shy. And if you think of something, by all means, go ahead and put it in the chat. If and if you have a question, you certainly can throw it in the chat. Um, you know, we, we want you to to share and and be part of the part of the conversation. Okay, so Amy, why don't you go ahead and read this? You manage things. You lead people. This is a quote by Mary Hopper. Mm. So. Um, would love for you guys to answer in the chat with the word yes if you have ever personally felt that you are being managed as a thing mm. yeah yep <laughs> yeah. unfortunately yeah 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 it's yeah, so it's, it's a icky feeling right nobody likes to be treated like a like a resource in in the most impersonal way that, that's not exactly. enjoyable right or a machine like you're a machine yeah yeah faith you are not a thing that is totally <laughs> true and you know it's unfortunate where we have we have managers or what some leaders that think that they are leaders and I'd, I'd say that they're probably not if they're managing people like things because people have emotions they have you know they're people and so if we're not mindful of that you know you, you can you can beat on a machine well i've done that repeatedly you, you hopefully you're not beating on your people <laughs> oh okay so i'm going to kick off this poll and there we go. Amy, you want to read that for folks? Yeah, sure. So um, we're asking, what is the mark of a true leader? Uh, is it the position held, the title held, how many people need to be led, or how many people are willing to follow them? Yeah, go ahead and, and make your selection. 
Yeah, just because you're given a, a leadership title, it does not mean you know how to manage others. Oh, true story. That is a true story. And, and you know, it's interesting. I mean, we, we've done some work with those in the, in the military and, you know, unfortunate corporate America doesn't do, I think that, I think the military does a better job of positioning its, it, it, it's people for leadership roles. And I don't know that corporate does, does that. I mean, I've been victim of, of, uh, managers that, that have been wonderfully, wonderful technically, and then have been shoved into a leadership role or a management role and they just fall apart. Okay. So I think we can go ahead and end the poll and see what people said here. So we'll share the results. Can everybody see that? Or not. There we go. Hopefully now you can share it. Now you, now you can see them. So uh, what is the mark of a true leader? And everybody said how many people are willing to follow them. So excellent. Gold star <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Okay. So poll first poll done. Excellent. All right. So the real deal. Here's what really happens. I mean, this is, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna pick on my husband because. I don't know. It's easy to do that. And he, he had a situation where he was working for uh, Kay and he, so my Jay is, he is seasoned in what he's, what he does. He's been around the block for 20 years plus. He has not, you know, I mean, he's, he started this particular role and was just struggling with, with getting on the same page with his new boss and that it was round and around so she had asked please can you can you do this i want you to do this i want you to do this this is how i want you to do it this is why i want you to do it and so he took a crack at that came back and delivered the work product she didn't like it wasn't wasn't what she expected he, he, they had some dialogue he went back to the drawing board and came back with some edits, still not working, still not making any sense. And you know, now the frustration is starting to amp up. And then uh, another dialogue, some more conversation. Here's what I want you to do. Here's how I want you to do it. This is what this is what this is what it should look like. So he took a third pass at it. And this went on for months, months. On, on, on multiple things, multiple work products, multiple areas. And, you know, ultimately they never did come to a resolution. It was so painful, uh, probably for both of them that he actually wound up leaving within, I think it was four months and, and said, I, this is not working. And what's un unfortunate is they were, they were friends originally and that friendship unraveled as well. And so this is, you know, this is the reason we do this is to share these tools, these techniques, these strategies, so you can learn, you can grow and you don't have that situation. Or at least if you do have that situation, you know how to deal with that. So that's what this is about. All right, so first thing, coercive. Go ahead and type in the chat what you think that means. What does that, what does coercive mean to you? These are the different types of social power that exist and how we can influence behavior. Yeah, so someone being like a dictator. Yeah, any other guesses too? That's good. Convincing someone to put their needs last, yeah. Mm. What's interesting about this, so ooh, bullying, bullying yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's good. So this, here's an exit, here's a good, and, and here's the thing, the, all of these can be used in the appropriate setting. So coercive is generally used in a bad sense. Uh, we've got manipulation, threatening, coercive leader, someone who abuses leadership power, those are all really good. Here's, here's a, this is one of the ways that um, coercive power is used in a positive sense. So imagine you have a little kid that is 
reaching for a hot stove, right? So you, you, you know, the mom then said, or the dad says, Johnny, don't touch that stove. It's hot. You're going to get burned. And so you're, you're using an element of fear to keep someone safe. So in that case, it would be appropriate. Um, but as a general rule, it's not something that is, is used um, or, or, or should be used, but we've, we see people do it all the time. We see managers, leaders, um, peers use this style all the time, this, this social power style type. What about legitimate? What does that mean to you? Legitimate power. Wrong guesses are okay. So just yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we've got earned competency, someone in charge, real, that truthful. Yep. So this can be interchanged with positional power. So so I have mentioned earlier that I, I worked for a manager that was a great technical uh, resource, and then he was knighted as a manager. He had legitimate power. He didn't know how to use it though. Um, you you have, have the skill set and what you do and are teaching people to do that. Competent and honest leader. A Jedi. <laughs> That's nice. Ah, nice, Andy. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I think the legitimate power is think think of, you know, it could be in title, right? It could be I'm I'm a director or I'm a manager or I have the, the positional power to tell someone what to do. That's legitimate power. And this can be misused as well. What about the next one? Expert. What comes up for you there? What do you think that means? And you can, you can provide examples too, if you want. Like Jedi, for instance. Yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like Jedi. <clears throat> Proven, knowledge or experience based, yeah. Know their stuff better than anyone else in the room. Mm, that's a good one, yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, are, are you familiar with the term subject matter expert? So that's thrown around in the technical world a lot. Well-versed in a subject, a specific area, SME. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yep, that's right, Kelly. Know it all, but might lack empathy. Possible. I mean, I've worked with some engineers that, that are definitely you know, 20, 30 years deep in their expertise and they're like uh, have minimal people skills. Yep, that's that's true. <laughs> Guilty, Michelle. Ah, <laughs> I love that, Phil. Yes. <laughs> uh, you have people skills, Phil. I know you do. <laughs> I've seen you in action. <laughs> oh, it's this. No, it's not all bad. No one knows it all. That's no, true. No, 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 it alls are bad. No one knows yeah. it all. That's oh, true. there we go. No, it alls are bad. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I read that wrong. Thank you. What about reward? What's that? What's that mean to you? Reward. Serotonin. serotonin. Ooh. Incentive. Yeah. Hmm. Or thought about serotonin. That's actually, that's a good take on that. Thanks, Evan. Giving positive feedback. Mm-hmm. Pavlovian, do what I tell you, get a treat. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Like a pals person do more yeah. of their best. It's not the same for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Two, day <clears throat> two days ago, I heard a quote that I really liked. The guy said, uh, you can either make a difference or make a lot of money. It's very mm. rare you can do both. Um, mm. If you're a fortunate one to be able to do both, and uh, I guess that would be rewarding. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's good. Or either Thank or, depending you. on which way you, you lean of your importance of the period in your life and um, background. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Phil. And if anybody else wants to come off mute and share you, but by all means, you're welcome to do that. We've got a small enough group that we can do that. Don't be afraid. I'm the only scary one. I know. <laughs> Phil, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Sorry I was late, by the way. No, that's okay. Happy to have that's you. okay. That's right. <laughs> oh, I love that. You know what I love to do? And you know, so something as simple as, um, a thank you. Thank you for 
doing that for me or thank you for helping me or sending notes, right? I love that. You know, my, my grandmother was really, really good about sending just because notes. And so nothing says that we can't practice that in the workplace. We don't get any, we don't get those types of things, the handwritten notes anymore. We get emails. <laughs> and I worked, um, I worked with somebody who said they had a boss or somebody they work with that always did like a handwritten note. Yes. Yes. Like when they yes. moved on or they got a promotion, like it's, some, it's like, it's a lost art writing, you know, it is, I mean? it for yeah. sure is Kelly. And people feel special when you do yeah. that, yeah. you know, you get a note and you're like, Oh, they took the time to actually handwrite that. Exactly. That's fantastic. Thank you. And, Kelly. And depending on your industry. So, um, stereotypically in sales, a reward is a beautiful form of social power because th there are some folks who get charged up by earning that trip or earning that, you know, if it's, if it's appropriate within that sphere, that can be a, an effective form of social power. It doesn't fit in all circumstances, but in some it, it's extremely effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I took a course once where it said the reward is different for different people. Like for some people it's, you know, a salary increase for some people, it's maybe a trophy for some people. It might be mm -hmm. just recognition with their peers. So I think you have to look at the individual. I mean, that's what I try to do anyway. Yeah. What would nice. they like? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then uh, Sandy says, you know, personal with employees and healthy competition. Exactly. Sure. What about referent? That's a, this is a tricky one. Well, what does what referent is, what is mean? Yeah. What does that even mean? So is I'll, I'll give it to you. So it is, it's influence. It's, infl it's the same thing as influence. So what this means is if you don't have, there are situations where you may not have legitimate power. You, you may not be the, the person in charge, but you are still able to influence the group. You're still able to influence someone else without that positional power. That's what that means. All right, so we're gonna do another poll. And let me find the second one. Here we go. So what can help manage expectations when it comes to trust? Promising frequently to look trustworthy, never making a promise in order not to disappoint anyone, <coughs> over-promising and under-delivering, under-promising and over-delivering. Awesome. Very good. Now we got some more still. And I just wanted to pull from the chat, Evan, when we were talking about referent um, social power, uh, he added uh, the likelihood that you'll be referred by others when you're not there. Mm. That's another nice. cool thing to think about That's it. a yeah. cool way to, I really like that. Thank yeah, you for thank sharing you. that. That's yeah, a really nice you. way to, to, to see that. I like that lens. All right, so I'm going to end the poll and I'm going to share the results. So everybody is in the, that's in the same page, under promising and over delivering. Yeah, we've got two easy ones. So that was, that was good. <laughs> We're not playing stump the jump, maybe a little later. All right, so I'm going to stop the sharing of that. And oh, Parna said influence can be much more powerful than position for sure for sure. And I've seen influential leaders take over a room and the, the legitimate, the one that has legitimate power winds up getting lost or, you know, um, yeah, not, not as effective as the influential leader, which is pretty, pretty cool. Okay. Amy, you want to read this one? You bet. Um, this is a Dwight D. Eisenhower quote, leadership, the art of getting someone else to do something you want done because he wants to do it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of words in there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as we, when we strip this out, we're, we're talking about influencing folks. So of their free will, they do the thing that you want done. How does that, how does that hit you guys? What do you think art means? The 
art of getting someone else to do something. Know what your employees' strengths and weaknesses are important. And I think that, um, I believe it was Kelly was, was mentioning that not everyone's the same. It, it's not a one size fits all. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe meeting people where they are and influencing them in the manner in which they want to be influenced. I think you have to understand the individual. And I think one of the things that I see a lot that I really am always complaining about is we forgot our humanity. We forgot when we're dealing with each other that we are human and we have these emotions and things that have happened to us. And I think you have to take that into account when you're dealing with an individual. And if you know somebody super passionate about this, you, you get them excited and then they want to they want to go do it and you let them run with it and see what they can achieve. Yeah, nice, Kelly. And then Aparna wrote um, unlocking someone's uh, potential. Nikki wrote, I said, influence Evans, the, the medium. So, uh, and, uh, Sandy, so you know how to get them to grow and, and challenge them. Yeah. And so the one size, it's not one size fits all is exactly it. Yeah, exactly it. So we want to, so all of us have different strengths, right? And I love this example because it, it really hits home. So, um, Kelly, I'm going to, I'm going to pretend that you and I are walking into a store and you, you grab, so we're, we're on the street and we, we're shopping. And so you, you grab this blue shirt off the rack. We beeline for the dressing room. You put on the shirt and you come out in the shirt and you say, Michelle, how do I look in the shirt? And I, I don't like that shirt on you at all. I'd say abort, abort, danger will Robin, take off that shirt. I found there's a pink shirt out there that I'm gonna go grab, take that off and let's put that on, right? And so how my strengths show up is I have the courage to tell you the truth and try to make it funny, right? Because you've asked me, how do I, how do I look in that shirt? Conversely, so if you do this same thing and you walk into this store with my sister, right? Same thing happens. You grab the blue shirt, you go, you both go to the, the, um, trying it on and you come out with that blue shirt and you ask, you say, Katie, Katie, how do I look in this blue shirt? She does. She's not going to handle it the way I handle it. She would say, Kelly, I saw this pink shirt out front take that off and I'll go get it. And you can try that on. Now she's creative. She got you out of the shirt and she's kind with how she delivered it. Right. Neither, neither of those are wrong. It's, it's using your strengths, your character strengths in a way that you can influence behavior, help others still get the job done and, and be kind, be empathetic, be compassionate. It's interesting how, how those, those show up, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. So we're going to do, we're going to play the superpowers game with Amy. All right. You ready, Amy? I am. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, and, and you all will have a chance to take this assessment. We'll give you the link uh, so you can take this assessment for yourself. You want to explain the character strengths and, and the reason these are so important, Amy? Yeah, absolutely. So we love um, to use this particular tool. It's a character strengths. There's a associated book that goes with it. It's the power of character strengths. The reason why we like it is um, several fold. One, um, I think we're really good at figuring out what we're not good at and beating ourselves up about it. Um, wouldn't it be far more fun to just lean into the things we're naturally, you know, gifted at and and play to our strengths? So um, our strengths are things that are, we call them the three E's. So they're effortless. Like you, you don't have to work at these. Um, they're essential. Like for me to not have humor in my life would be like not having water um, and uh, essential. It's, it's, a, it's a integral part of, of how I show up as a person. So there are 24 um, character strengths in this particular um, tool. And um, so 
per Michelle's example. So honesty is actually towards the bottom of my list. And I was horrified when I took the assessment. I'm like, oh my God, this means I'm a dishonest person. No, it doesn't. Um, it merely means that there are other things that are effortless, essential, and energizing for me. It fires me up to be these five. It actually wears me out to have a tough conversation. I mm. will have a tough conversation, but I might need a nap afterwards because that leaning into honesty just doesn't fire me up. So I just want to give you some context around it. So for our superpowers, we like to assess ourselves as to whether or not they are a superpower, meaning I use it um, appropriately for the greater good of myself and others. Kryptonite, meaning, ooh, perhaps I might be overusing that to the detriment of myself or others, um, or one to grow on. So that would be like, oh gosh, that's a strength. I didn't realize not everyone could do that. Maybe I could do mm -hmm. it even more. So yeah, so for me, I think, oh, and by the way, so your five is kind of like a fingerprint. So mm -hmm. no one else has these five and has your experience like all wrapped up together. So for instance, um, my humor is informed by my social intelligence. So I use humor a lot, but I'm always going to err on the side of being appropriate versus I have lots of friends who will just use humor and it doesn't always land as intended. That would be I'm, me sometimes. <laughs> I'm more likely to have it land as intended because I'm more careful uh, in, in sensing the room and that kind of thing. So, and spirituality is one that I am. I'm recognizing I can lean more into. So these days uh, I'm using it as a superpower, but previously it was one to grow on for me. So let's play the game, Amy. Humor. Yes, yes, yes. So Humor. is it super, are you, is it a superpower? Yes. Is it a mutant, mutation, one, which is one to grow on, or is it kryptonite? Uh, humor is superpower. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What about spirituality? Uh, kryptonite, one to grow on, or superpower? Uh, was a mutation. Now it's becoming a superpower. Nice. And social intelligence? Definitely a mutation because I had no idea not everyone could do that. I didn't realize mm. that was a thing that could be considered a strength. So and how do you uh, define social intelligence? That I tell it more like a story. So okay. let's say I walk into a networking event. I walk in, I'm like, in a mindset to make connections. Mm -hmm. I observe the room. I come over here and I have my how's the weather conversation with this group. And then I float over here and have a fairly in-depth, like real genuine connection with someone else over here. Um, I'll say a couple, I'll crack a couple jokes. I'll, um, I'll make a connection between two people and bring them together. And then I walk out of the room feeling pretty fulfilled thinking I probably left the place better than I found it, you know, in some small way. And the whole time I'm having a good time doing it. Like I don't, I'm not really working at it. I'm not strategizing. I'm just being me, nice. which apparently not everyone does that. Well, uh, that was, and, that was nice to me. and so it was a, it's a mutation because you assumed that everybody else was as good as you at that particular character strength, right? You're like, exactly. took it for granted. It's like, yeah, can't everybody do that? And you're like, uh, no. No, not everybody can do that. <laughs> not everybody wants to do that. Yeah, yeah. Nice. What about love? Um, that one, um, I think that's a mutation. Um, I, I think I'm getting more and more comfortable in bringing my whole self to all parts of my life. So that, that's when I'm growing. Nice. And then gratitude. I, ironically, I think at times it has been kryptonite because I would be so grateful. I would put myself second. Not that anyone was asking me to. I just had this internal barometer that was wrong. Um, I'm a very grateful person, but I have to kind of bring it back to center to make sure I'm bringing that to myself as much as to others. Ooh, so that then there's there's times where it could be kryptonite for you where you're not you're not looking you know grateful for yourself your yeah. your own uh, abilities and things like that. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. 
So I'm, I'm going to drop this book, you know, so this is, there are 24 different character strengths. This is, this is the book. And I'm going to drop this link in, in the chat. So you have that if you're interested in that as a resource, uh, give me a moment. There we go. It's a really long link because I've just grabbed it from Amazon. Thank you for buying Amy. And so we would encourage you, we're going to give you the link to actually take this assessment so you can find out what your superpowers are um, and all your character strengths and then determine whether they're superpowers, whether they're kryptonite or you know if you have some room to grow with those. Okay, so Amy, what about this quote? This is from Gandhi. I suppose leadership at one time meant muscles, but today it means getting along with people. Mm. So, so here's a question for you guys. Yeah. Go ahead, Michelle. Which social power will allow you to get along with people the most? Do you remember? Do you remember which one it was? Or which one you think it is? You can either drop it in the chat or just unmute yourself and chime in. Social intelligence. Hmm. Yeah, let me go. I'll go back to the list. There's the list. So you have it in front of you. If you look at those five, which one do you think allows you to get along with people the most? You can throw something out. Don't be scared. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay to be wrong. And yeah, you're not it's wrong. right. It's right. <laughs> yeah. Referent. I see some legitimate reference. Yeah. I think referent is the one that, that allows you to the influence, right? Influencing others, regardless of whether you are in a, a position of power. Yeah. That's the one. So help me Excellent. out, Michelle, what's the difference yes. between expert and referent? So I guess so, even, even if I'm not the expert, I can still influence based upon something or is that? Yeah. So, and here's what's cool. So if we, I forgot to mention this. Thank you for that, Phil. So you can use a combination of these. It's not like you have to just to pull out one and use only one. Like you can, you can, you can be, have a position of power. So maybe you, maybe you are the manager and you use your referring power, you're influencing people by um, you know, helping them grow. You are rewarding them saying, thank you. I appreciate you. You may be an expert in your field. So that, to answer your question, Phil, the difference between referent and expert, expert is I, so you are an expert in security, right? I consider you an expert in the security field. Um, and so that would be one use of using your expertise in your field. You can also influence other people based on that expertise and your personality and, and helping them understand, you know, based on the fact that I've worked with you, I know that you're able to share information in a way that doesn't make me feel stupid, right? Which is amazing. So <laughs> not everybody can do that. So that would be using your referent power or your influential power and your expertise in combination. And yeah, it, it's interesting to me because it seems like the, my expertise drives the referent power, right? I don't think I have a referent power outside of my expertise, but I was kind of wondering if there's another, like it's foreign to me to have any kind of, any kind of use for expertise except for referent power. So that was insightful. Yeah, that's good. Awesome. That's good. Yeah. And you can use these in conjunction uh, to you know really help people get where they need to go. Especially when you have folks who are the decision maker, that's the legitimate, right? And then they may or may not have to be the expert depending on their leadership style. Um, and there are certainly those that are jack of all trades, but master of none who are coalition builders. So they may lean more in, in the other camp. So you can see how your your style and your talent as well as you know your expertise and your literal title can all smush together to create your unique style of leadership exactly thank you amy so we're going to do another poll question and so let me find that um uh, let me launch this okay go ahead amy as a leader when do you get credit 
all the time, only when your plan ultimately succeeds, whenever your followers succeed, whenever you save the money, the company, time and money. I don't know why, but the who's the, the dude and the, the, the guy that goes, ha, 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 ha. That, who is that guy? When uh, That's what I think of when only when your plan ultimately Dr. Succeeds. Evil? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's, that's how bad I am at movies, right? I don't even know the characters. <laughs> so funny. Oh, my goodness. All right. I'm going to go ahead and end this poll. And so here's the results. Whenever your followers succeed exactly a lot of reinforcement going on here right so a lot of you already know this stuff okay so i'm going to stop sharing the results and uh I, so type in the chat uh type type yes in the chat if you're familiar with this or no yes or no yes or no are you familiar with this model have you seen this model before um Tell us, tell us your thoughts on this. Yes or no? Got some, I got, Parna says no, Faith says yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, too many times, nope, yes. Faint glimmer, oh, that's good, Heather. <laughs> yes, I vaguely remember seeing this before. Okay, so here's a refresher for those that have seen it. It's been around for, I think, like two decades. And <clears throat> what's cool about this is and Madison said, yes, I've seen this in my management courses in college. Okay. So what's cool about this is it helps us use uh, specific styles if with, with specific people in certain situations. So <clears throat> we'll start in the bottom right-hand corner, telling style. That's where, so let, let, uh, you, I'll use an example. So let's say you have an uh, intern or somebody new to the team. They're, they're just, they just started in the industry in your field. They are maybe a bit deer in the headlights kind of thing going on. They, they're going to want to know what to do how to do it. They're not going to have a lot of confidence. Um, they, they'll need specific instructions. So in that particular example, you would want to tell someone how to do it, what to do, why to do it. That's where that comes in. A baby Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy. Oh man, that's fantastic. That's really good. Oh, that's funny. So then we're going to go up to the right hand corner, the top right hand corner, and that's selling. So this may be for someone that <clears throat> knows what they're supposed to do. They're confident, they're, they're willing to, well, they may be willing to do it. They may be unwilling to do it, <clears throat> but explaining the decision, <clears throat> this may be where you have to sell them on why you want them to do whatever you want them to do. Maybe they're not they maybe they don't they don't agree with it. Maybe they don't they don't agree with it. They don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to them. They're like, I'm not doing it that way. That's dumb. So you may need to use the selling style to explain what and why. That that might be a, a situation that you would use that particular style. Um, then if we go down to the bottom, or actually I'll just go I'll go around and uh, so. We'll go what, counterclockwise, I think. So participating style, that's up in the left top hand corner, participating style. So now you have someone, maybe you have somebody on your team that, or, or, or someone that, that you're leading that you see potential in. You see that they have, the, there's, they're excited about it. They, um, they may want to do it. Um, they, they want to work collaboratively with you, but they may not be confident in, in their skills and abilities. So then they may need some help. They may need some help for you to do some, them to do some, that's where participating comes in. You know, this collaboration, um, could be warranted as far as that situation. 
And then the last one was delegating. So, you know, this could be for someone that is willing, they're able, they're confident, and you just, just get out of my way. Let me do it. I know what to do. I know how to do it. So here's my question to all of you. Do you lean towards one style or another? Is there one, like looking at this, the, the, this, this matrix, is there, is there a particular style that you lean towards? Curious, what are your thoughts? Heather says participating, awesome. They says, I assume everyone is in delegating mode because that is how I roll. <laughs> I love that. Nice. Delegating. Somebody said selling. Okay, cool. Anybody else want to share? I too, I wind up in the delegating. Amy is delegating and participating. Um, I think here's what's cool about this matrix. The, the idea here is to be mindful that it's not one size fits all. It's, you know, you, if we look at our toolbox of leadership, you know, you, you want a hammer, you want a drill, you want a saw, you know, you, you want to pull out those tools for the different situations. And so be mindful of using these different situations and all, you could also make it okay to have a conversation with your team, to share this with your team and say, Hey, you know, let's, let's figure this out together. And, and how do you want me to work with you in this particular instance? Yeah. Awesome. And also you can look at these four and go, Ooh, I, I would avoid that like the plague. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can be gently curious about, Oh, well, maybe I, maybe I could practice my selling style and get more confident there. So when okay. I need to pull that out of my, my tool belt, I have it available. Nice. Thanks, Amy. Sure. Thank you, Aparna. Thanks for, for, thanks for joining. Okay. So here's a question. So if we, if I go back to uh, J and K, um, how could that have been handled? So what would have been maybe the, what would, what would have worked if we look at that situation, right? So he was told what to do, told how to do it. What, what do you think could have been a better way to handle it. And it's not, a, it's, there's no wrong answer here. What, what might have facilitated that a little bit better? Thanks, Sandy. Thanks for joining. She's got to go teach. <laughs> we could just start with what do we think that Kay was doing to Jay? Like what was mm, her yeah, style? That's a good question. That's right. Team. This is the problem we need to address. What do you think could, could, could be ways to address it? A follow me approach is needed, but not delivered. Yeah, nice guys. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, my gut tells me that Kay was in telling style mode. She was giving very prescriptive instruction. And it seems to me days like, yeah, my competence is high. Why are we doing this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but he probably would have preferred, I don't know, anything other than telling than that right? <laughs> giving his tenure, I think exactly. was probably what was going on there. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. And so I think it could have been probably leaning more to the left of this grid. So participating or delegating may have been a bit more helpful for that situation to get them through it and lead to a positive outcome. Exactly. All right, so we have one final poll question. So let me find that. And this one, this one might be a little bit tricky. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and launch that. I don't know how to pronounce these last names, so I'm gonna probably botch That's it. That's all right, okay. butcher, butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> what does Kuzes and Posner's ability to model the way mean? If you capture the imagination, you will inspire creative thought and increase loyalty. You must lead by example. Truly empower people to act on their own within their level of authority. Positive attitude is infectious. Nice. Mm. 
Okay, we've got, got a mix. We got a mix. I like this one. This one's a mix. That's the, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I, I embrace the guessing, you guys. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's good. Guessing is good. That's how we learn, right? I mean, that's how we learn. We're like, yeah, I think this might be right. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, that's cool. All right, I think I think the movement has stopped, so I'll I'll end the poll and I'll share the results. So we've got a, a couple of people that said the first one: if you capture the imagination, you will inspire creative thought and increase loyalty. Uh, next one is you must lead by example. Uh, third, truly empower people to act on their own within their level of authority, and then a positive attitude is infectious. So it's actually. It's the second and third one. So you must be must lead by example and truly empower people to act on their own within their level of authority. So it's a, that's a combo. That's a that's a little bit tricky, but um, nice nice job, everybody. Okay, so Amy, why don't you read that one? A leader leads by example, not by force. Sun Su. Yep. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So does anybody remember the two styles that could be forceful here? I'll go back to that so you can see what that looks like. What are the two styles that can actually be more forceful than the other um, uh, so social power types? Throw them out. Yeah. Marjorie said coercive and legitimate. Yep. Yeah. Coercive and legitimate. Exactly. Yeah. That's spot on. Because I said so, I think is that's right. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. And sometimes that sometimes you 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 have no choice but to use that some because you know this listen, I know we you're not we're not liking this idea or don't really want to put this in action. Can you just do it? Because this is what is coming down from the top. But it's not appropriate to do that all the time. Otherwise, you know, people just get frustrated. Okay, so here's our style ship, style, leadership style guide. Um, we're gonna share it. We want to share this with you, and you know we love acronyms. So M stands for motivation. Uh, A stands for accountability. V stands for values and strengths. E stands for engagement. N stands for network and not the technical one. It's the people one. <laughs> and then S stands for social power and situational leadership. So S squared. So we're going to go through this now with a few of you. Here's, here's how to define your leadership style. Um, okay. Who do we want to pick on? Ooh, good question. Ooh. Uh, Amy, you, you choose. <laughs> Evan, we'll put you in the hot seat. All right. All right. I can end. All right. Yay. Good job. <laughs> so Evan, why do you want to lead or influence other people? Um, I just want to be able to share my ideas and have my ideas heard, be understood and share ideas with the scientific community. So we actually met at the science policy, um, event maybe like eight months ago. So I was wondering, I was like, oh, where do I know this? But that's that's why that's how I got here today. I saw that's you nice. I saw you with the congresswoman um, at that the science policy thing in Colorado. So uh, yeah, for me, it just comes down to shaping up like uh, government policy using scientific dialogue. So being able to lead and share ideas, bring people in and collaborate. This is this is what it means to me, right? That's awesome. Thank you for Thanks. sharing that, Evan. Yeah, thank you. That's 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 fantastic. That is fantastic. Um, Madison, would you like to share what accountability means to you? You know, how, how do you hold your, you know, what do you use to hold yourself and others accountable? Yep. So with, with me, I'm definitely like the accountability always has gone by like not only with list of responsibilities but also um making sure to stay organized because as you stay organized with different things you're able to not only hold yourself responsible for the role and then 
leading by example helps you have others around you hold yourself accountable as well. Nice. Thank you for that. Um, you know, I know we, we love books, obviously. So here's another one, Dare to Lead. And in this book on, I have a bookmark because I love it so much. So on page 100, it talks about the task approach for accountability. And T stands for, you know, who owns the task. A is, do they have the authority to be held accountable? S is, do we agree that they are set up for success, time, resources, clarity? And then C, do they have a checklist of what needs to be, what needs to happen to accomplish the task? So it's T-A-S-C. If you look that up, thank you, Amy. Yeah, if you look that up on Google, you don't necessarily have to have the book. You'll be able to find, find that. Thank you, Madison. All right, Amy, who do you want to pick for values and strengths? I am going to put Nikki in the hot seat. Nice. I had this feeling that it was going to be me. <laughs> Hi, Nikki. Hi. Yeah, so values and strengths, you know, this is something that at our organization we talk about a lot. And so we actually came up with a list of values and strengths. So not only, you know, as a leader, saying these are the strengths that we should have in our organization and values, but really collaboratively coming together as a team and saying, okay, what are our values and strengths as an organization as well? Um, so for me personally, that's somewhere that I'm still working on. Like, what are my strengths? What are those values that I'm bringing to the table? No matter where I'm at, no matter what part of my life I'm showing up as, because I'm a leader in many different areas. So this is an area that I'm really excited to just learn more. Nice. Nice. And we'll give you the link for the, the strengths too, so that you, you, you could take it individually and compare notes on, on character strengths as a, as a team. That'd be fun. Thank you for sharing that, Nikki. Okay. So engagement, I am going to pick Annie. Annie. Uh, what's your oh, thought on how Annie's you... um she's uh she's in the can I think she's not uh... oh <laughs> okay all right very good so try <laughs> again right Evan <laughs> yeah yeah try try someone else all right try again okay <laughs> no problem. so Heather Heather talk to us about engagement and how do you create engagement with others um I really try to be a um open influencer and leader and ask a lot of questions to drive conversation and I think when people jump into the conversation and feel like their thoughts are being heard they want to engage a bit more nice nice thank you so much for sharing that Heather really appreciate it all right Amy who would you like to select for network you know what Phil let's hear it <laughs> so, it's just funny because I was just I got pulled away to the uh, side just for a second ago. So the question that's all is, right. who's, who's in your network? In your network? You? Yeah, who's in your so, network to support you as a leader? So I've been thinking about that a lot, even just this discussion right here. And I have a um, I have a colleague who I had to seek out as kind of a mentor, and I would mm -hmm. have never imagined her as being like a mentor because it's you know somebody that works in a different department, somebody that doesn't do security. They don't. She doesn't. I mean, she does do technical stuff. But um, uh, in terms of supporting me as a leader, one of the insights that she gave me was, is like, look, if you're looking for um, accolades or validation or something like that from somebody in your peer group or your manager at your level of career where you're at right now, it's like, you probably need to let that expectation go. Not that mm -hmm. it's not that person's job, not that, that it wouldn't be nice if you could have it, but if you're looking for validation, look somewhere else besides your boss, mm -hmm. right? Um, even though like, like I crave that as like, as like, you know, hey, um, even like, even for my own dad, right? It's like, it's like, hey, that, I'm an adult, but validate me kind of thing. Daddy issues, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, who's in my network is, uh, you know, my peers that I seek out because I know you reach a certain level of the career and, and it, it, it takes some help from your friends to, to move along, so. Hope that addressed. Nice. Question. Thank you, <laughs> Phil. Awesome. Really appreciate it. Annie, and... uh, Annie's back, by the way. I just wanted to. Oh, all back. right. Well, then let's let's put her back in the hot seat. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Evan. Nice job. Nice. Well, well done. Well played. 
<laughs> okay, so Annie, now that you're back, we want to know the social and situation. What types of power do you use and when? Oh, uh, hi. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. Um, here, let me just take a look. Oh, probably motivation. Then I would have to say. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. For, I know we put we really put you on the spot because like, what are you guys talking about? I just got back here. <laughs> oh, that's no fantastic. So here's what what would what, what you suggest you do next? You know, we, we talked a lot about character strengths. I, I think it would be awesome for all of you to actually take this assessment to find out what your top character strengths are. So I just dropped that in the chat. Go ahead and copy that. And we get the results automatically. Um, we will, if you, if you do want to take the assessment, you're going to feel free. We would be happy to play the superpower game with you. So we'll do an outreach um, with all of you. <clears throat> we'll just send you a note saying, hey, we saw you took the assessment because we'll get notified. And we'll say, do you want to play the superpowers game? And you know that's our contribution to helping you start creating your leadership style. So I'll put that up again or in the chat. Yep. And so here I put it, put it up again. There it is. And it's also in the chat. So you should see it in the chat from me. Uh, so you should be able to get both of those. And we are right. We got right at time. We're done. <laughs> and we're happy to stick around a little bit to answer some additional questions. If you have to leave, um, you know, it was great having all of you and playing with you today. Thanks for sharing and thanks for participating. It's been awesome. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Super fun. And that's it. That's all we had. So I'm actually going to stop the recording now. Have a great day, everybody. We'll stick around a little bit for questions. Thanks, everybody.